helicopters as specialists uh, for emergency medica medical service, search and rescue applications. Since uh, 2022, he's very new. Uh, he joined IDS with uh, GeoRada as business developer for geo monitoring applications <laughs> with the aim to develop a, uh, along with final user advanced and reliable solutions for early warning and real time monitoring of critical infrastructures and natural hazards. Alexandra? Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, I have quite a, I'd say, not a, a very focused background in this field. Anyway, I've always worked in, um, in the emergency sector, and this is another way of understanding uh, what's happening. The situational awareness is key, as we have just seen, and these systems can provide you with a very uh, a real, real-time monitoring and early warning capability to understand what's what's happening there. Uh, the term innovative, uh, I anyway included it in the in the title. Actually, to be fair, the the technology is not that innovative because it's, it has been around for 15 years now, but it was widely adopted in the mining industry that were so very keen to adopt this this new system to enhance their productivity. I mean that they had different drivers to to choose the system, and uh, what we think and I'm focused on civil application is to uh, to improve, to, um, uh, to to have a wider adoption of the technology also in civil applications. Just a few words on the company. Hexagon is a is a huge huge group. It has more than 200 companies within within, and it's divided into several uh, several divisions. One of the uh, one of these is the uh, geosystem division, and as you can see, there are uh, 19 companies within it. And uh, IDS is one of them. And the other one that is our, let's say, cousin, it's uh, like a geosystem that you for sure uh, for sure know. And we are active um, as IDS, mostly in mining, as already said, in monitoring uh, for utilities detection with the ground penetrating radars, and also in the uh, construction and uh, surveying engineering fields. In terms of, um, let's say, deliverables, both hardware and software, um, I mean, um, our company, IDS, produces both GPR, ground penetrating radars, as you can see here for utility detection, some of them, and also systems for non-destructive testing solutions. Um, anyway, uh, the other, let's say, stream of uh, IDS products made by interferometric radars is the one on uh, the right and is, let's say, represents the most advanced and complex technology. So now a, a few words, I mean, uh, I, I cannot um, uh, go um, uh, too deep into the, the technology, but just to, uh, to present what is interferometry. So basic radar usually sends a series of waves and understands the presence and the distance of an object depending on the time, elapsed time between the transmission and the uh, receival of the signal. On top of that, interferometry allows to identify the difference of the, in the phase of the received signal. So um, using this, um, this information and the, uh, let's say the, the technology behind that is really complex, um, we are able to identify if the target has moved away or towards the, uh, towards the radar. This allows to, um, to have an accuracy up to 0.01 millimeter usually for, uh, for the, the system here, for IBIS-FS, uh, and then the other are for uh, up to 0 0.1 millimeter. So uh, with the evaluation of the phase difference between the signals, um, we're able to understand, uh, I mean, if the target has moved. This means basically um, that uh, this technology works on the it's not an absolute absolute measurement system. It's, it's more a relative one. So the system is meant to um, to be placed to monitor the target, and the system is capable of detecting if something is moving. If you move the system and then put it back in, in place and start a new acquisition, there will not be the possibility to to understand if something has happened in the meantime. So I, I want to be clear on that because. Uh, interferometric radars can provide 
a, a huge added value to monitoring for uh, early warning, situational awareness, and real-time monitoring, but um, uh, is not the solution for all the problems, let's say. We will see that um, the best way would be to have um, uh, a complementing the, the, the mutual usage uh, of different technologies. There can be uh, interferometric radars, can be data station or geotechnical sensors to have a real comprehensive view of the monitor scenario. Here we can see the three main families of products uh, uh, within the, our interferometric portfolio. We have here uh, the IBIS family was the first one to be introduced in 2007. Then we have the Hydra family and the Rockspot. So in terms of capabilities, IBIS FS is a real aperture radar, is a static one, so it does not allow for any movement of the sensor and is used for um, uh, linear structures monitoring. So bridges or uh, uh, could be uh, wind turbines, anyway, linear structures. Why linear structures only? Because in its basic configuration, the radar basically sends this stream of waves and divides the space in front of it into slices. As you can understand, as far as you go from the system, the width of each slice will be huge and the technology provides as an output one single point of information for each slice. So as long as you are monitoring a linear structure, simple, uh, like a bridge, geometry is known and also the, the, the potential output is known. So it's, uh, it's uh, let's say, straightforward to understand that the single output for each slice would be the, the, the vertical displacement of the bridge. And also the system is also, uh, capable of automatically redirecting the, the output in the, vertical, in the vertical direction. This is why, because interferometry as a technology identifies the, the displacement in the line of sight. So um, wh when, you are, when you are monitoring a bridge, there will be anyway an angle between the line of sight of the rider and the vertical uh, of the bridge, but the angle is known as so the, the software automatically calculates the, the vertical component of the, of the displacement. If you are monitoring wider scenarios, might it be a slope, a building, or a dam, the fact that you, you will have a single output for each slice would be, uh, let's say, useless in case of these wider scenarios. So we have introduced the synthetic aperture radar technology. So for IBIS FMIVO, uh, we put the, the sensor on a linear track, so the sensor is moving one way and the other. With this capability, each point of the scenario is hit multiple times from different angles by the system, and so we can recreate a two-dimensional scenario, a two-dimensional grid of the scenario. So uh, in the end, there will be uh, one piece of output for each cell, and this cell is approximately 20 centimeters times two meters of dimension. In this case, Abyss FM EVO, as you can see, up to five kilometers of range and 0 0.1 millimeter of accuracy. It is meant for very long range and long-term uh, monitoring campaigns. So um, usually it is installed on concrete blocks and left it there to monitor for months or even years. Um, Thanks to the connection and to the, the software, all the data is always and in real time available from a remote location. So you will not need an operator there looking at the tablet to check if the data uh, are okay, but everything is remotized to the office location. And especially there is the possibility to set up the uh, alert and alarm thresholds. So you don't have to be there 24 seven to look at the data if something happens, if the displacements go beyond the, the, um, uh, the threshold that you set up, there will be an, an automatic alarming system providing SMS, emails, and oral warnings to, uh, let's say, to inform that you have uh, exceeded the, the limit. This other family, it's called Hydra. Uh, Hydra stands for Hyper Definition Radar. Um, let's say for Hydra G, G is for ground. Um, application are quite similar, uh, dams or slopes, 
but uh, it, it is meant, thanks to the tripod, it is meant to be uh, more easily deployed uh, and especially to be used in, uh, in emergency situations. And we have some, uh, I will talk about that uh, later. On top of that, starting from Hydrogy, we developed a specific version for a tunneling application. Uh, so with a low power sensor to also with other different features to account for different conditions of the underground, uh, underground conditions uh, and different lighting conditions. And so um, I say this is uh, used to monitor the tunnel phase during uh, conventional construction activities. The Rockspot, it is uh, here, uh, it is uh, an interesting product uh, because all the products that I presented you until now are meant to monitor uh, zoom movements. Um, there are some, some conditions and we have seen in the previous presentation, we will see it in the next presentation, that there are some sudden falling events that are, let's say, disruptive. Uh, there are no, uh, let's say, precursors of the event. So we, we have introduced also radar Doppler, uh, Doppler technology in order to be able to evaluate the shift in the frequency rather than in the, in the phase of the signal. And so to provide for an immediate uh, alerting system if something is happening. And this system um, is also interfaced with some, let's say, external safety systems, traffic lights or bars to, uh, to prevent the access to the endangered area. So talking about the potential application of the systems, um, I mean, the same system with the exception of the Hydra T for tunnels, that is specific for that, uh, for that single application, the other can be used for different scenarios or different applications. Um, as Hexagon, uh, we are now able to merge capabilities and technologies from different systems. So, uh, I mean, it would be, uh, very important also for surveyors and for final users to use, to have a concurrent use of interferometry and TPS or laser scanners. Also to complement the, the different capabilities of the system. Uh, interferometric radars are very, very precise, but provide a one dimensional information on the displacement. Uh, while TPS, for instance, can provide a millimeter accuracy, but will provide a three-dimensional information of the, of, of the displacement. What we, we can provide on top of that is that we can have a single source of information in terms of software where you can merge the data and have the, uh, all the data available at once. Then uh, some, sorry, then some uh, applications. One is for, uh, in this case, a bridge monitoring. This is an away viaduct in, uh, in Italy. Um, we wanted to compare the results coming from the, uh, from the interferometric radar and from, uh, let's say, traditional contact sensor. Uh, why that? Because uh, one of the main pros of interferometry is that you don't have to access the, the target. You don't have to go there and put any contact sensor on that. You just have to deploy the system at a certain distance. It can be 50 meters, 200 or one kilometer in this case. And, uh, and you will have uh, the information of any point of the, um, of the target. So you will not have a single piece of information for each contact sensor that you are putting on the, on, the, on the target, but we'll have the comprehensive view of the system. But obviously we wanted also to compare the accuracy of the system with the, uh, with the LVDTs. As you can see on the right, uh, the, the continuous uh, graph is, uh, is the one from the, uh, from the radar. And as you can see, the, the difference between the calculation uh, is really minimal. On top of that, the system was able also to recreate the, the deformed elastic curve. Very interesting point about IBSFS is that on top of the uh, static analysis of the system is able also to provide the dynamic analysis of the target. Um, so it is, uh, let's say, it could be a, a game changer uh, in this kind of application. I mean, the possibility to to have uh, both both analysis. Step for energy. Uh, here we have the um, a peculiar case, uh, uh, if I can say that that there was in northern Italy. 
there was a TBM creating a new um, a new uh, a new line, um, and so the, uh, the 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 job that uh, Hydra was uh, asked to perform was to monitor if the buildings uh, that, that were standing along the, the chalk of the TBM uh, were moving, and which was the settlement of the building uh, at the end of the um, of the TBM excavation. So th these were the results, and uh, I mean, with one single system, we were able to monitor three different buildings. Uh, I, I cannot go in, in details on that, but basically the software creates a, a cloud of points and the operator can select as many points as they, as they wish to, to be displayed on the, um, on the graph. Anyway, the, the system stores the data of any single point that can be hundreds or thousands. And then so that you can highlight potential differences in the behavior of the, um, of the uh, structures. So as you can see here, building, building, B, uh, building C, sorry, suffered the, the least movement and that has smoother uh, settlement. Building B uh, highlighted uh, some uh, bigger movements in the end while building A was the one that suffered the, um, the most from the from the TBM excavation phase. So this was also very important, both for the construction activity, but also for the municipality to evaluate if there were some uh, maintenance activity to be performed and to have, let's say, uh, the, the clear situation awareness of the, of the building behavior. In this case, instead, the EBIS FM, so the one that is lights uh, that moves along the track, was deployed for very long term monitoring to, uh, to, to monitor 24 uh, 7 a slope that was known to be, uh, to be unstable. As you can see here, here the graphs are only for six days, but the, the monitoring project lasted um, months, uh, actually. And um, the, uh, the software, in this case, the software is called Guardian, allowed also, uh, there is a specific feature that is called inverse velocity uh, tool. Um, the software basically identifies the, uh, the velocity of the movement if it's increasing, so the inverse velocity is decreasing. Then the operator can select the um, uh, regression factor that is uh, the, the most it's the closest to the uh, to the uh, to the scenario in terms of uh, geophysics and geotechnical parameters. Uh, all the, the the parameters, the the regression factors that we inserted, are coming from statistical and scientific um, papers uh, from let's say from experts. And so the the system basically calculates one uh, one C understand that there is a constant increase in the velocity, it then redirects the, um, the, the curve up to the zero point, so the, the failure point of the scenario, and provides an alert with a prediction of failure. With some, let's say, with some conservativism, the, um, the system always, let's say, uh, identifies a potential, potential date with, uh, with some margin. And the, the cases that we had, uh, the system always provided an alarm between 18, 36 hours prior to the, to the foreseen um, collapse date. And the, the, actual, uh, the actual delta was uh, between 6 and 12 hours. So it was, it was proven to be quite an important tool to, to have all the time, to not to have the last minute rush but to organize the, the emergency activity. Last but not least, uh, for rock falls, I have, um, I have said that if there is time to understand the behavior of the movement of the scenario, we can have precursors and have all the time to, let's say, uh, identify how, this is, how the, um, the, the scenario is evolving. In case of sudden falling events, instead, you need a very timely and immediate alert of, I don't know if it's, yeah, the video is starting. 
fortunately it is not the best visualization but as you can see here uh, there is a, a red track so uh, the system immediately identifies the I don't know, let's see if I can start it back again. Here, as soon as the system detects the movement, um, there is the, the, the path, the track of the rockfall immediately displayed. All the data is stored in terms of time, front velocity, duration, and um, all the data is stored also to be used for statistical purposes um, after, after the events. What is important to say is that also for the limitations that I, that I have uh, highlighted before, um, interferometric products are not meant to be a measurement tool, but more uh, an early warning. So it, uh, they are meant to be very accurate, timely systems to provide an information if something is happening. But I mean, they, they are not meant to have also, especially for the fact that they provide a 1D um, information only on the line of sight of the radar, they're not meant to provide a very precise information on the actual magnitude of, of the displacement, but they are a real uh, added value to understand immediately if something is going on. So just to conclude, the main added value in terms of risk management, they are remote monitoring systems. So uh, they are meant also to be left there for days, months, or years. You don't have to access the target, so there are also some safety implications. There, uh, there is not the need for an operator to go there uh, and put some contact sensors, especially if you know that the, that the targeted scenario is unstable. Then there is the filtering of the atmospheric uh, uh, events. We have developed a very robust uh, algorithm along with the uh, University, Polytechnic uh, University of Milan. And uh, with the permanent scatter technology, we are able to provide you with a real information of the movement of the scenario. So all the external disturbances are um, filtered out. And uh, with a single system, there's the possibility to monitor the whole structure. So just consider a slope. You can monitor from two, five kilometers of range, and you will have information about thousands of points at the same time. And then data are uh, remotized, so you can uh, access all the data from, uh, uh, from the office. And the, uh, there is also the possibility to reposition the system. So especially just think about Hydra, if you have um, multiple locations to be monitored, you can have one week, two weeks um, monitoring campaign of a, of a certain slope, then you can move the system somewhere else and then come back. There will not be the possibility to uh, directly correlate the two uh, campaigns in the, same, um, in the same scenario, but anyway, you have the possibility to have an easy redeployment of the system. Last but not least, the alarming system is automatic and is very robust, so um, you don't have actually to be there 24 seven to look at the data, but it will be the software and the system to inform you immediately if the thresholds will be exceeded. This ends my presentation. I try to be as quick as possible. Fortunately, I cannot go deeper into the, the, the features of interferometry, but anyway, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to, to answer. Thank you, Alessandro. Questions if anyone have a questions because we have uh, yes, was that? No problem. I can, I, I can move closer. And, uh, you have to stand here. So the one on like and here. <laughs> I will not move. I was doing it the, the Italian way, just moving in. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for the uh, interesting uh, presentation. This is Tonette from TU Darmstadt. So my question is, um, since um, you're saying it's measuring relative movement, right? Uh, do, do you not have problem um, in establishing a stable base reference, particularly in a very active area, for instance? You mean for the for the georeferencing uh, of the of the system with respect to the scenario? 
No, no. I mean, reference, base reference where, I mean, it, you have to make it that the reference is stable so that you know that the, it is, so the relative movement. It's not like both are moving, you know, in a very, for example, in the Philippines, both both blocks are moving, then you don't know which one is. is. Exactly. This is the main the main problem, potential problem about that, because since the the, um, the evaluation, the, the measurement is relative, you cannot know if it's the target that is moving or if it's the system that is moving. That's why in some cases we install the system on a concrete block so that we are, we are sure that it's not moving, that it's perfectly stable. Or at the beginning, we georeference the system with the GPS with the scenario so that we have, um, we have a first hint of the relative position and this is kept. Or we have some accelerometers embedded into the system so that if the accelerometer detects some movement of the system, then it will be uh, automatically cut out from the, from the results. So the, the actual final output is time by time filtered uh, with the information coming from the accelerometer. Thank you, uh, Alexander. I think we really have to move. Do you want uh, to have a question? <laughs> I think we have to move on in order to keep the time and you can discuss in the- Absolutely break. afterwards. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, and our next presenter is from Geobrook, uh, Helena Landa. Helena is a geology specialized in natural houses, and she studies master degree in geology um, in 2013 from Lausanne, Switzerland. She worked uh, abroad in many different countries, including Germany, Canada, 